بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی موونگ فارورڈ ود دا رول آف دا گورمنٹ اینڈ دا ویریس ڈائمینشنز اینڈ ایسپیکٹس آف دا گورمنٹ اینڈ ہاؤ دے ٹین ٹو فنکشن ٹوڈے از ٹاپک بیسکلی از فارمز آف گورمنٹ ریگولیشنز ڈسکریشنری ورسز نان ڈسکریشنری اینڈ مینڈیٹری ورسز والنٹری سو لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹمین ان دا لاسٹ سیشن بیسکلی وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ ہاؤ دا گورمنٹ از اے ویری امپارٹنٹ اسٹیک ہولڈر and actually one of the most important stakeholders because it is uh, the regulatory body and again it is uh, the element which tends to join the other stakeholders together and tends to protect all of the stakeholders uh, from a legal standpoint of view and also from a regulatory point of view. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about government regulations, then they can either be discretionary or they can be non-discretionary and they can be mandatory or they can be voluntary. Now, when we're talking about discretionary regulations, uh, they are those at the choice of the regulation administrative agency. So, the discretionary regulations are formulated by the regulatory agency based upon its principles, policies, and approach. Uh, if we look at it a little more, they are mostly implemented at the micro level. These include fixing the price of various commodities, which we see uh, in our markets all the time, Uh, where we have the regulatory uh, price control committees, the DC, the deputy commissioner basically is doing that. Uh, the distribution of scarce resources. So uh, this type of situation, uh, as an example, uh, is the Thraparkar situation where uh, basically we see that uh, water and nutrition uh, has been extremely scarce and emergency was declared. Uh, optimum utilization of resources. Again, we, when you talk about minerals or we talk about uh, the different trees, and plantation, then we can talk about uh, the optimal utilization of resources and then imposing quantitative restrictions on imports, etc. For example, we look at a wheat uh, import or we look at oil import uh, or we look at, uh, we look at uh, automobile imports. So all of these things are uh, done most of the time quantitatively. And these are the discretionary uh, regulations which are with the department and uh, basically they're not Uh, complete laws, but they basically are policies or they could be uh, statutory regulatory orders, which we call uh, SROs. So all of these things are taking place and we can see it at the federal level, at the provincial level and at the district or at even at the TSE level, there would be a variance in all of this. And they could also be a national uh, also uh, SRO or a particular uh, regulatory Uh, uh, no, uh, discretionary, uh, you can say, uh, fixation uh, or regulation, and that would be applicable upon the different citizens of society. Now, uh, when we go on the other hand, on to the non-discretionary regulations, these are those regulations formulated and implemented by agency as per rule or as per law, and that usually law is uh, promulgated by the federal, uh, by the federal government, and that basically means uh, the National Assembly, or by the provincial assemblies. The administration uh, agency has no choice with regards to formulation and implementation. These ex measures are generally exercised at a micro level through legislative reform, just like I was mentioning to you. Uh, different examples and one of the most common example is the amendment in the income tax law, which we see nearly every year, while increasing or decreasing the rate of tax, concessions granted to any uh, section of taxpayers, uh, and similarly, uh, other things which are done uh, by the promulgation of a particular law, they become very important and they are non-discretionary, uh, they are not the prerogative of the regulatory organization or institution, but it is the prerogative of the government as a whole and they are very, very important. Then when we look at it from another perspective, uh, it could be mandatory versus voluntary. With mandatory regulations, compliance rate will be higher because non-compliance will invite penalties. Full or adequate disclosure cannot be ensured sometimes because people will try to satisfy the rules. In case of voluntary codes, only those who are very much ethical will make full compliance. So again, uh, when we're talking about these mandatory regulations, they usually conform uh, to the societal needs, societal demands and societal uh, implications. And therefore, we see that they are uh, more compliance oriented uh, because uh, if Uh, they are not complied with, then there would be different penalties which would be imposed. And 
to basically avoid that penalty, the citizens and the stakeholders and the shareholders, they basically would be following all of those mandatory regulations because there is no option and uh, there is no way out and therefore they become uh, extremely important. Uh, now, when we're looking at the view of the Cadbury Committee in cognizance uh, of the compliance of voluntary code coupled with disclosure, then we see that it is more efficient than a statutory code of corporate governance and the Cadbury Committee basically introduced the comply or explain technique. So, that is what we see over there. Uh, according to the Blue Ribbon Committee, emphasis on making the code of governance uh, as mandatory uh, is there and we basically see all the recommendations of the Blue Ribbon Committee were adopted by the New York Stock Exchange. So, that also had its own consequences and then uh, we look at the King Committee uh, basically recommended the principle based uh, voluntary mechanisms which consist of three principles, uh, leadership, sustainability and good corporate citizenship. So, uh, again ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we basically see is, is that uh, there is a stark difference between the mandatory and the discretionary uh, basically regulations and then furthermore we see that uh, in the voluntary context uh, that has its own implications and uh, the uh, different committees basically uh, looked at it from a different perspective. Uh, but most importantly is that the mandatory, uh, the mandatory regulations are extremely important uh, to be implemented and it is not that uh, we have any option or any choice in it. So, therefore, these different government regulations have different implications and based upon those implications there are various penalties or uh, various consequences based upon how they are being imposed and how they are being followed uh, by the different uh, stakeholders or shareholders. Thank you so much.